Call the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Mr Speaker, before I deal with the, uh, the substance of my speech, could I extend my thanks to Jerry Brownlee and John Carter, uh, uh, respective ministers who are responsible for this, for a, uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, for ex as uh, my leader Phil Goff has said, for accepting the two recommendations that we made yesterday around consultation in respect of orders and council and scrutiny of those orders and council, but also in the way that uh, um, we now, as, if you, as it were, opposite numbers have interacted in the last uh, few days uh, in a spirit of cooperation. There is no politics in this issue and people both in uh, my province and in New Zealand would hang their heads in shame if they thought there was. So I say that um, as we go through this bill, uh, my colleagues and uh, my party will be supporting the bill. I thank Jerry Brownlee for a further commitment which he made yesterday, which has colleagues on our side given the, and I accept the logistics, given the short notice we've had to have a look at the legislation, uh, have been working and may well propose some additional ideas and some thoughts because as a parliament we want to ensure that the bill that goes through is as robust as possible so as to deliver as best as possible for the people of Canterbury. And I thank Minister Brownlee for his commitment to, uh, in the spirit of bipartisanship, look at any proposals that we may put up uh, in all seriousness in order to present to the people of Canterbury as high a quality piece of legislation and as effective piece of legislation as we can possibly deliver. As the Member of Parliament for Waimakariri, uh, having damage going from Belfast and Redwood through to Kaiapoi, Karaki, Pines Beach, uh, to a lesser extent parts of Wood End, to a lesser extent parts of Rangiora, uh, and also to Waikuku, can I join with other members and say, uh, if you are not religious, whether you are or not, uh, one would have to say that one would believe in miracles. It is a miracle that people in Courtney Drive and Kaiapoi, sir, were not killed as a result of this earthquake. The female police officer, who I'm told was lying in her bed, sleeping when the uh, shake, rattle and roll occurred, got out of bed, walked out of the bedroom. Had it, not been a, had it been a second later, I'm advised she would have been killed as the roof collapsed on top of her. This is a tragedy of immense proportions. This has provided huge trauma for people. As I walked around Pines Beach and Karaki and Featherston Ave, it has also brought out, of course, as other speakers have said, the best in the human and the Kiwi spirit. I wandered down Hood Street, and, uh, which basically looks like Beirut in the 80s on a good day. I don't think there is one house in Hood Street in Pines Beach which is habitable as we speak. Two young guys taking out into their trailer what was left of their belongings uh, in their 20s, I would have thought, said, Mr Cosgrove, I've got a question for you. What is that? I said, where can we sign up? Now, I've got to say, my reaction was, and I said it to them, I said, look, guys, you're entitled, actually, to think of yourselves, for at least for the next few hours, to get yourselves and your family sorted out. They said, no, no, we'll be finished in an hour. There are people worse off than us. We want to sign up. Where do we sign up at the Civil Defence Post? The amazing stories as I went from house to house. The interesting theme, you would knock on a... Well, if there was a door, I was going to say you'd knock on a door, you'd go into a property, you'd say, how's it going? How are you? Are you OK? And almost to a house, sir, the reaction would be, look, I'm all right, I'm OK, go next door, look after Mrs Smith or Mrs Jones. And you'd look up at their house and it looked like somebody had taken to it with a giant can opener. But the generosity of spirit to say, don't worry about me, even those families who had kids go and check next door, they're worse off than me, has been incredible. To go to the Kaiapoi North School and latterly the Smith Street Kaiapoi Rugby Club Civil Defence Welfare Post, to the, Welf to the post, uh, Civil Defence Post at Pines Beach, where a lady who has lost her home, it's gone, has come in and, and uh, manned that post day in and day out as a civil defence worker, has been brought to tears occasionally when, when very rarely she has thought of herself instead of thinking for others, rare that that has been even though she is more than entitled to do that, uh, to Michael 
the Salvation Army uh, worker who has, with his team, uh, looked after folks with hot meals day after day, to people like Dave Pilkington, a vegetable packer who I gave a call to, I need vegetables for the Civil Defence Post. Dave said, well, I don't own the vegetables, I only pack them. And five minutes later, he took it upon himself and liaison with his customers to provide a couple of truckloads of vegetables to folks. These are wonderful examples of the human spirit. But I say this, we are moving to a second phase. We are moving to a phase where that, if you will, as a, as a, as a councillor said to me, sort of negative euphoria and shock is dissipating, and we're moving to a phase where folks are now becoming more brittle, and you have to respect that, because as one said to me, I might have to go to the toilet in a bucket for the next six months. I may not have a house. How do I get the kids to school? All the sort of, if you will, mundane activities that one takes for granted in a normal course of events have now become insurmountable problems for many of our respective communities in Waimakariri, in Christchurch, in Selwyn. Uh, just the day-to-day -day activities of getting by now present an emotional marathon for folks, and that is creating a higher expectation, a greater demand for resource, a greater demand for activity, and a greater demand for swif swifter res resolution of problems. And I say to the government in goodwill, that is the challenge that ultimately they will face as we move through this to meet that demand, to meet those higher expectations, to meet that need for further resource. Uh, this bill is needed. Uh, no one wants to see a delay uh, that in, in the activity of returning people to a decent standard of a life, to giving them their lives back. No one wants to see a delay, but we do make the point, as other speakers have, and I am gratified that ministers have touched on this, that these powers should be limited to the recovery, limited to the emergency, and not used by local authorities or others for other surreptitious means, shall we say. I am gratified that there will be parliamentary scrutiny through the normal parliamentary process of standing orders, and as I said, that the minister, Mr Brownlee, has guaranteed that there will be consultation with us uh, prior to orders in council coming into force. There are many competing forces in our respective local authorities. The issue of heritage, the issue of environment, the issue, of course, of getting people back to normality and getting them back into a livable uh, a house, getting them accommodation, and dealing with the trauma. Can I say we also should not forget those people who have responded to that trauma, the people who have acted like human sponges in soaking up the trauma of others, the volunteer fire brigade people in Kaiapoi and my patch, the trauma counsellors that have dealt with the folks who have burst into tears, men and women alike, and the kids who have been terrified, and just sat there and put an arm around their shoulder and let them talk, and let them try and deal with the here and now and the trauma that they feel, especially kids, every time we have an aftershock and we are still having them. I say as a personal note, and Mr Brownlee should be uh, proud of some of his relations, I pay tribute to the Brownlee boys who own the Kaikanui pub in Kaiapoi. And I do this in all sincerity, who, as a gesture, uh, took in the contractors and the volunteers who have worked hours on end, 12, 13, 15 hour days. Many of them who have had their own homes destroyed but have got out there and said, to hell with it, we've got to do something. Who put a bit of a shout on, did a very Kiwi thing. So for the next hour, boys and girls, the beers are on us. And not only have they done that, but they've done a number of other social things just to give people a bit of a breather. And I say to Mr Brownlee, uh, he should be proud of his distant cousins. It is a Colmer not so distant. First cousins, my apologies. Um, <laughs> Um, it is a culmination of government and parliamentary work, of work of local authority politicians and officials, right down to contractors, private and public, to uh, St John's, to the fire brigade, to the odd publican who provides a bit of light relief, to the victim themselves who helps out their neighbour. It is a culmination of all those things, sir, 
that will start to get us back on the road to recovery.